Hello there and welcome to my Backgammon channel. Thanks for joining me today. Now, in today's short lesson, we are going to look at back games. Now, should you ask a room full of experienced backgammon players what the most devious and difficult game plan is, you will unanimously get the response back games, which have the reputation of being fiendishly complicated. And there is good reason why as yet no grandmaster has written a comprehensive book study on the subject. Now, I by no means are going to rise to that challenge in today's short video, but I am going to introduce you to some of the fundamentals, some of the nuts and bolts type thinking, which will hopefully help guide you through some of these difficult scenarios should you encounter them over the board. So let's begin. Now let's start by looking at the two types of back game, which we can differentiate into deep and high anchor back games. Now the deep anchor back game, which you can see in the left position, is when you occupy the lower points in your opponent's home board, such as the one and two, the one and three, or the two and three. High anchor back games are when you occupy the higher points, such as a five and four, five and three. Now, these two types of anchor games, back games, they both have different features, which we can go into in more detail. Now, deep anchor back games tend to result in more wins, but also in you getting gammoned more often as white, because here you can see that you are quite deep in Green's home board. Now, in some ways that is good because it means you are causing a problem for Green, being somewhat of a nuisance. So when Green clears points, bears checkers in and bears them off, there is a high chance that Green is going to be leaving a blot. So here you have the winning chances of around 40% usually, depending on timing. So deep anchor back games do lead to more wins, but at the same time, they result in you being gammoned more often because here you can see that you are stuck back deep in Green's home board and therefore it's harder to escape and bring those checkers around the board. So really here you are relying on a shot to turn the game around. Now, alternatively, the high anchor back game means you are going to lose fewer gammons because it's much easier to escape from the higher points. But at the same time, this will result in fewer wins because here green can simply play over your head and put the checkers over you to the points. So here you're less likely to get a shot, but of course you're more likely to save the gammon. So really it's a trade-off and you need to take into consideration match score and cube placement. So deep anchor back games, more wins, but more chances of getting gammoned. High anchor back games, fewer wins, but also fewer chances of being gammoned. So those are the two types of back game. Now, if we look at these two positions here, now I've made a variation by moving one of white's checkers from the six point to the 16 point, And that change has resulted in white's winning chances increasing by 7%. Now, why is that? Now, the reason for this is because white's timing has improved and white will have more opportunities to play that checker around the board, which would mean that he wouldn't need to crunch his home board or be forced off the anchor when green starts clearing points. Now, it's really important in these deep anchor back games to hold onto your points for as long as possible to cause as much mischief uh, when green enters. Now, timing is really key, and it's the first point I want to mention. 
And here we can see these two types of positions. Now on the left, green has rolled a 4-3 and of course could pick up white's blot in the outfield. But by doing so, that would be a significant blunder because that would vastly increase white's winning chances. If you think about what would happen if you did make the hit on the left position, white would enter low or even better, white would dance, um, which would cause you more problems as green when you're trying to clear the points. So hitting there is wrong because it increases white's timing. Whereas on the right hand side, the position is slightly different because green there still has a bar point to clear which can cause some problems. So here, it's marginally better on the right-hand side to hit white's blot. And hopefully white will dance and then green can clear the bar point safely. So this is why back games are so complicated because timing is key, when to hit and when not to hit. And the key consideration is that you should be behind in the race by the amount of pips your anchors are worth. So for example, if you have two checkers on the 24 and two checkers on the 23, which are greens one and two point, you should be down in the race by about 100 pips. So that's a good consideration to bear in mind when you consider timing. Now let's look at the second tip. Now this follows on from the first one, which is on timing. Now, often is the case that you need to improve your timing. You need to get hit, deliberately get hit, so then you can recirculate the checkers and improve your timing so as not to crunch your home board or break the two anchors. Once your anchors are broken, of course, green can just attack you, close the board, and then really your winning chances are massively decreased. So here, white has a 6-2 to play, and of course, could just make the outfield point, but that would be an error. Here, it's much better to play loose and to leave the blots. Here, if green hits you, it actually works in your benefit as white, as aforementioned. It improves your timing, allows you to stick around for longer and cause more trouble for your opponent. Now, the third point I want to mention is when you bear off. Now, here we can see two different roles. On the left, green has a 3-2, and on the right, green has a double three. Now, in both scenarios, it's important to clear your points and move all the checkers off the six point, because here, you really want white to leave. So you want to kind of slow down your bearing off. It's better always to stack up your checkers. It gives you more flexibility, but also slows down your bear in process. Now here, even with double three, of course, you have the opportunity of taking off four checkers or three checkers, but it would be wrong. It's simply better to play three checkers forward off the six point and then only take one checker off. This leaves really good distribution with you being even on the back and white will leave your anchors where you have many builders to close the point he leaves or to bear off more safely. So let me look at one further comparison with you. Now here, the rolls are the same, double three, but here, white has run out of timing on the left and started to crunch the board. So this now has become a really hopeless situation for white. And this is what you try to avoid in back games, which is why timing and circulation of checkers is so important. 
So because White's um, home board has been crunched, here you can be more aggressive on your bear off as green and you can take off three checkers because your opponent does not have the home board to contain you um, should he get a late shot. Whereas on the right hand side, of course, white's home board is stronger, the timing is much better. So there it's simply better to take only one checker off. So I hope you can see some of the tips regarding timing and bearing off in back games. And here are a few extra tips to bear in mind. Um, consecutive anchors tend to block more rolls and generate more shots, uh, but spaced anchors are slightly weaker. Anchors are better two points away. That's uh, Walter Trice from Backgammon Bootcamp, definitely worth reading. And the best anchor back game is a 2-3 anchor. That's considered the best. And finally, backgammons are a last chance saloon. So as I started with, they are fiendishly complicated. The best players in the world find them incredibly difficult. And here you can see two positions just to show you how hard back games really are. So how would you play 6-1 on the left as white? And how would you play 3-2 on the right as white? Now, put your answers in the chat um, to the video. I hope you've enjoyed this short introduction to back games and you feel a little more enlightened. Uh, most of us are in the dark about this. It's supremely complicated and difficult. But if I or anyone else can shed further light on this, then that's great uh, for us all. Um, so thank you very much. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. New videos every Wednesday. Uh, good luck. Happy rolling. See you next time. Bye-bye.